This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to be going over 10 errors that you will probably encounter in Python. And understanding the cause of these errors will make you a better programmer because you'll be able to fix them much faster. Starting with the first error. And for this example, I'm going to create a class called car. And this car is going to have an initializer which takes a brand of type string as the first parameter or as the only parameter. And then we're going to assign that to the instance. So here we have one instance attribute, which is called brand. And if we actually want to refer to that, we just need to create an instance out of this car. So I'm going to create a car called Volvo, and that's going to be this instance. And as you can see, I pass in Volvo to the brand. And because of this, we can refer to Volvo.brand and everything's going to work quite fine. But what would happen if we were to print Volvo.fuel type? Well, here we would encounter an attribute error and it will tell us that the car object has no attribute fuel type because this attribute does not exist. There's nothing defined in this class that follows fuel type. And to keep it simple, an attribute error is pretty much whenever you try to use dot notation on something that doesn't exist. We could also do something such as volvo.drive, a method that does not exist here. And that's going to give us an attribute error. And this also applies to functions or literally anything that you use dot notation on. So even if we have a function called function, which returns nothing, and we try to use dot notation on it, so we say hello, and we remove the car above, we're going to get an attribute error here as well because function returns nothing, which means we cannot use dot hello on it or even on the function itself. This will still give us an attribute error because function object has no attribute hello. Moving on to error number two, import error and module not found error. Whenever you want to import functionality into Python, you will use the import keyword. So for example, we can import math and then use the functionality from math. If that module exists, we're not going to get any errors because we successfully imported that module. But if we were to type in from math import Bob, we're going to end up with an import error that we cannot import name Bob from the path of that math module. So anytime you try to import and something goes wrong, you're going to encounter an import error. Otherwise, if you were to import Bob directly, this module does not exist anywhere. So what we're going to get is a module not found error because it does not exist anywhere in our project. And the reason I put these two together is because a module not found error is just a kind of import error. Moving on to error number three, index error. And for this example, I'm going to insert two iterables. One's going to be something called names of type list of string, and it's going to contain two names. The other one's going to be a variable called numbers of type tuple of type integer, which will accept an unlimited amount of elements. So here I inserted five and that will be that. Now, if we want to access any of these elements, all we need to do is refer to the variable and insert an index. For example, for names, we can insert the index of one and we will get James back. But if we try to insert the index of two, we're going to get an index error that the list index is out of range which should be quite obvious because right now we only have two elements in here, but Bob starts at the index of zero, James at the index of one, which means we have nothing at the index of two. And that's why we will get this index error. And the same thing applies to tuples. So if we go to numbers and we grab whatever is at the index of two, we're going to get three back because three is at the index of two. But if we go outside of this, if we type in five, for example, we're not going to get anything back because this only goes up to the index of four. Error number four, key error. For this example, I'm going to paste in a dictionary of type string to string, and it's going to be called data. And what it's going to contain is the information of a certain individual who I will not name, but he has a job as a programmer, his ethnicity is his ethnicity, and his best friend is obviously James. Right now, if we were to print this data at the index of job, what we will get back is programmer because this key exists inside the dictionary. But now watch what happens if we try to use a key which just does not exist. What's going to happen is that we're going to encounter a key error, 
a key error for salary. And all this is telling us is that there is no key named salary. So we cannot retrieve a value for that. So anytime you try to use a key that doesn't exist, you're going to get a key error. And a very useful life hack is to use the dot get method, because this way we can try to access something that doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, it's going to return none. And additionally, you can also return a default value. So that can be literally anything. Here, I'm just going to insert default as default, and that will be returned instead. Error number five, name error. Whenever you're copying and pasting code from ChatGPT, there's going to be a chance that you're going to encounter a name error because ChatGPT really likes to invent things that do not exist. For example, you might be creating a game and ChatGPT is going to tell you to print this value, high score. The only problem with this approach is that we did not define high score anywhere. And that's where we will encounter this name error that high score is not defined. It was never introduced into our program so we could never use it. And this is probably the most common error I get with ChatGPT because it does not understand how to scope things the way I want it to scope things. So a high score might exist in a function. For example, you might have something here called calculate score. That's going to calculate some sort of score. But anyway, inside here, we're going to have a variable called high score of type integer, which will be equal to zero. ChatGPT is going to think this is fine because once you calculate the score, obviously you should have this high score. But even if you call it before, that's not going to work because this was only declared in the local scope, which means the global scope has absolutely no idea what high score is. And that's how we ended up with this name error. Up next, we have error number six, the not implemented error. And this is personally one of my favorite errors because it's a user defined error. And it's something I recommend everyone uses instead of using pass or the ellipses when defining a placeholder function. For example, you might be designing a program that scrapes information from the internet. So the first thing you'll do is create the function called scrape website, and that will take a URL of type string, if I can do that, and it will return to us the information, preferably in a dictionary format. Now, usually if you create a placeholder, you're going to pass in pass so that you can move on with the rest of your program. And in a lot of cases, this might be fine. But if your program ever grows in complexity, there is going to be the chance of you forgetting to actually implement the functionality here, especially if you have different files, you might just forget about it, which means that once you call this file, you might wait and not understand why nothing is happening. Because right now, if we were to scrape this website and we're going to scrape my own website, you'll see that in the console, nothing's going to happen. And that makes it incredibly difficult to debug at times. So what we're going to do instead is raise a not implemented error. And here we can add any custom message we want. We can also say functionality is missing so that if we ever try to call this function, we're going to get this error. And that just tells us immediately that we forgot to do something here, that we did not finish the function. And you're not required to give it a message. I just think it's usually cool because you can add some silly notes, but even without the message, it will still tell you that it has not been implemented. And you'll probably see this being used a lot in abstract classes, but it also works outside. So whenever you have functionality that you want to code later, I highly recommend you raise a not implemented error instead of passing. Error number seven, stop iteration error. And that was not a statement. But for this example, we're going to import from typing the generator type because we're going to create a generator here. And this generator is going to be called number generator. And that's going to return to us a generator which yields an internet, an internet, what am I saying? Which yields an integer, allows us to send nothing to it and returns nothing. And I know this might seem quite confusing, but I just recently made a video about this. So if you're curious about this type annotation or how generators work, follow the link in the description box down below. It's going to be titled generators and it will explain absolutely everything you need to know about generators or how to make them. Anyway, if you know what generators are, at this point we can type in for i in range two, yield i. Then with that being done, we can create a generator called mygen and that's going to be this generator with this type annotation, which I'll just copy, and that will equal the number generator so that we can finally yield values from it or retrieve values from it. And to do that, we're going to call next on my generator. So the first time we do that, we're going to get the first value. The second time we do that, we will get the second value. The third time we do that, 
we're going to get a stop iteration error because here we only have two values to yield, which means once we run out of values to yield, we encounter the stop iteration error, which tells us that the generator is done. And the most common place you'll see this being used under the hood is in for loops. For loops try to iterate through everything in a certain iterable. And once they are done iterating under the hood, the for loop will raise a stop iteration error and that will exit the for loop. So generators do the exact same thing, which means you will probably want to handle that if you are using a generator. Error number eight, syntax error. And the syntax error can be described as a miscommunication error because as programmers, our job is to communicate to Python what we want. And if Python understands that, it's going to be able to carry out our wishes. But if Python doesn't understand, then it's going to be confused, which means if we were to print, for example, hello world without closing the parentheses, Python's going to say, hey, I have no idea what you're trying to say here. So it's going to raise the syntax error because we're speaking a language that Python does not understand. Even if we were to use no parentheses, we will still end up with a syntax error because modern Python has no idea what we're doing here. It doesn't follow Python's language. Other places you can see this is when you're creating a string and you don't close the quotes, that will give you another syntax error because we try to define a string here and we do so by starting with a quote, but we don't end it. So once again, Python just doesn't know what to say here because Python does not understand this. And this will also happen if you use reserved keywords. So class of type integer equals 10, that will not work because class is a reserved keyword which belongs to Python. So we can't use it as a variable giving us a syntax error. Moving on to error number nine, one of the most infamous copy and paste errors, the indentation error. And I find this error to be quite common amongst people who do not work in Python, such as architects. A long time ago, I met someone who was working in architecture and when they were using the programs, all they were told were to copy and paste scripts that ran certain functionality. But obviously sometimes when you copy and paste a script, it's not going to be indented properly, which means once she ran that script, she would encounter this indentation error. And when you don't program, these red errors look like dark magic. I mean, it says something that you don't want to look at. What is an indentation error? But for programmers, it's quite obvious that we did not indent the correct block because a function requires a block to actually work. I mean, there are some people who are going to argue that you can do it on one line. That is true. But if you want to put multiple statements on one block, you're going to have to indent it. And the same thing applies for for loops. So for i in range three, print i plus one. If we indent it, it's going to work quite nicely. But if we don't indent it, we're going to encounter this indentation error. Although you can also do it on one line once again. But if you want multiple statements, you have to use indentation. And last but not least, we have two errors that are closely related, the value error and the type error. But first I'm going to explain the value error. So first of all, let's try to print the integer value of the string of 10. As you can see, we can pass in any string here, any string that's a number. And when we run this, we're going to have that converted to an integer. And that worked perfectly fine because we inserted a value that was compatible. But if we were to insert something such as the string of 10, it's of the correct type, but the value is not compatible because you cannot convert a string with these characters to an integer. And that's going to trigger the value error, which occurs when you insert a value that does not make sense to the function. Because again, you can insert any string you want here. It can even be this random text and it will be an acceptable input because the type is correct, just the value is messed up. On the other hand, if you were to insert something such as a list of let's say A and B, what we're going to get next is a type error because the int constructor expects a string, a bytes like object or a real number, not a list. A list is an incorrect type. So this operation was doomed from the start because the type was incorrect. Also, if you were to insert none, it's not a type that integer can understand. So it's an argument of the wrong type, which is going to give us another type error. 
So yeah, those were 10 errors that you will probably encounter in Python. They are very common and it's just good to know why they are caused and how to fix them. But I'm very curious to hear what kind of errors you've encountered in the comment section down below. Or otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.